Hello, my beautiful friends. I am so excited to talk about the sound of Mars today as I'm like so excited. This is like such a Mars thing. It's like, wow. Um, so I, I really love that. Um, okay, so let's talk about the sound of Mars. Now, I'm going to do the sound of Mars a little bit different with the sound of the moon. We really talked about the signs and we did not talk about the houses really at all. But today, I really want to talk about the houses with Mars because as I as I start listening to Mars and what it sounds like and what it's saying, this is how because this is how I read charts, right? I, I I really instead of reading the chart, I really listen to the chart and I'm listening for what the signs have to say, what the planets have to say, um, and what the aspects in between those planets are really saying to us so that we can get to know you the best. Um, because when you know you the best, then you can express you the best. And that is what this is all about. This is what singing your soul is all about, is really getting to a place where you can express yourself very well and in a way that makes you so happy and brings you so much joy. So when I very first started hearing Mars, I heard a motor like zzz, like this continuous running and that is totally de um, descriptive of how Mars is. Mars likes to move. Uh, Mars creates a lot of action. So what I want to do is I want to take and we're going to break down what Mars is saying in each one of the houses. And then I'll throw like a little bit of the signs in there just so you can see a little bit of the flare. All right. So let's start with the very first house. So the first house is really a lot about um, the body and a lot about character. So Mars could come in there sitting in, in Mars in the first house and Mars could be like, hey, let's focus on your body. Hey, let's do like, let's work out. Let's like really move the body. Let's, let's be really, um, hyper focused or let's be really focused on, um, the character, our characteristics, like our character and how we are. So it can show up either one of those ways. Um, and I, I really love how I said hyper focus because that can happen with Mars. So as we go through, as we move through the charts and the sound of Mars in each one of the houses, I want you to take a look. How is my Mars sitting? How am I sitting with this information um, in Mars in this specific house of mine? Am I feeling balanced in this or am I feeling a little out of balance? Um, so I want you to take a look at that because where we have gifts, where we have strengths, we also have an opportunity for weaknesses, right? And so we get to take a look at that because when we can see our weaknesses, then we can step into the strength of it um, and allow that to help us out of the weakness of it. Um, okay, so <laughs> I love her. She was totally not with me until I started this video. Um, love it. Okay, so first house Mars sounds a lot like, hey, let's focus on the body. Hey, let's focus on who you are and, and what your character is. Second house, all about money, all about value, all about worth. And I'll tell you what, sometimes that can really show up with this um, very drive to uh, make sure that your worth is known, that your value is known, that it's not tromped on. Um, it could show up very much like um, uh, knowing and talking about money is very important. Um, like I'm just thinking maybe some influencers that talk about money, people that have written many books, they could have that Mars in their second house, just like really driving this discussion about money and driving, um, the learning of it and sharing the education of money with other people. So that can show up in there as well. Um, I, I love, I love Mars. Uh, I love the sound of it. I, I was talking to um, someone earlier this morning and as I was looking at her chart and just could really hear Mars in the second house just being like, it's not fair. And I was like, oh, the driving the fair. So it could also do that, like wanting to make things as equal as possible. Obviously, fair is, um, fair is not fair. 
like nothing's fair, right? And as much as we want things to be fair, it's really hard for us to have fair things. But it's this trying to create this equality and wanting equality, even if it looks a little bit different, um, but making sure that it's there. So we will communicate a little bit differently with people if our Mars is sitting in the second house and we are wanting equality um, in specific kinds of ways. Okay, so let's talk about Mars in the third house. Mars in the third house. The third house is all about communication. Holla! I love it so much. And I am a third house Mars kind of gal. Um, and I can definitely see my Mars being in the third house. Um, I am for sure... Um, an external processor. I really like talking. My voice rarely gets tired. If I, I'm belting for an hour, I can take five minutes off and then go right back into like this extensive uh, vocal exercise and it's really no big deal because my Mars is in the third house and it is driving that motor in my communication. It is so fantastic, but it's also come with its weaknesses in ways that um, I have uh, had opportunities working with clients and, or I'm sorry, as me being the client, working with people and just working with energy workers and they're like, oh, your throat chakra is off and it's overactive. And I'm like, of course it is because it's always overactive. It's never underactive, but I'm, there's things I'm not saying, right? Because there was that um, really, um, unbalanced energy there. So of course there were things that I wasn't saying because I was saying too much of something else. And as I have really come into this place of better balance, um, not perfect, right? Because I'm still human, but better balance with Mars in my third house. Then I, I know when and how to use that motor really well and really accurately. Um, so it gives my communication a so much better yeah. flow to it. Okay. So let's move on to Mars in the fourth house. Okay. Mars in the fourth house. I love the fourth house. It's all about family. It's about home. It's like all those re like really, really good feelings. Um, and when I when I listen to Mars in the fourth house, uh, one of the things I heard, which is really interesting, and I want to say this doesn't necessarily mean that it's Mars for everyone in the fourth house, but this is just an example of something that might be said with Mars in the fourth house. I want to make a home everywhere. I want to feel at home everywhere. Um, I want to feel, I want people to feel at home in my business. I want to feel at home when I go to the grocery store. Like it just like, it just feels so important to have that like home and family feeling. And so you might see someone with Mars in their fourth house, just like really driving this, um, this attention focused on their home. So fantastic. Okay. So let's move to the fifth house, the fifth house with Mars in uh, the fifth house is like a lot about the creativity. It's about children. Um, it's so fantastic. It's about pleasure. I really like that. It's fantastic. Mars being about pleasure. And it's not just necessarily about our own pleasure. This could also be like, I want to talk about pleasure. I want to encourage other people to experience pleasure. I want to be creative. I want to create on a regular basis. I need to create on a regular basis. And I want to, I want to stop for just a moment and say this right here. Even if you don't have Mars in your fifth house, there could still absolutely be a need for you to be creative on a daily basis. There is still absolutely a need for you to like feel pleasure and want to be in this place of feeling pleasure. Like pleasure is something that I definitely think that we should all experience. And I want all of us to experience, right? Just like I want all of us to experience feeling at home and knowing our value and feeling stable and connected with, with money and, and with our body and with our character and with all of these other things. Um, but Mars in these specific houses really give us an help, give us an indicator of, um, who, a, a little bit of who we are, B, 
part of our mission and what we're here to do and and how we are here to share our message, right? Because I'm here to help women connect to the power and the frequency of their voice. So how perfect is it for me that my Mars is in my third house? It couldn't be more perfect, right? So your Mars being in your house is just so perfect for you. So Mars in the fifth house, really um, running that motor for creativity, pleasure, um, connecting um, with children uh, in a way that just feels so, so joyful. All right, let's step in to seventh house. The seventh house is all about partnership. And I think a lot of times we look at the seventh house and we see a lot of marriage stuff in the seventh house. But what I want to say, and, and, and as I, as I like really listen to Mars in the seventh house, one of the things, the loudest things that I hear in Mars in the seventh house is it's not just about marriage. It's really about that one-on-one intimacy. So your Mars in the seventh house is really driving intimate relationships. Um, and as I, as I like really listen to Mars in the seventh house, one of the things that I hear is one-on-one relationships are really important to me and they help me progress. They help me feel heard. Um, and they help, um, give me the energy that I need to move forward. I'm just listening to it. Um, so it, it's, it's like, the Mars is the motor that drives, but it's also the motor to receive as well. So I know that for me, like using me as an example, when I need to process through something, as I process externally, and as like I'm saying the words, especially speaking the words, it helps me understand. And as I understand more, then it feeds more. Or as I listen to someone uh, share information back to me, Um, then it helps feed that motor and it makes sense to me. So when we have someone that has that motor in the seventh house and there, that motor is really about that intimate relationship, right? Whether that's in marriage, whether that's in friendship, that one-on-one communication really helps, um, invigorate or enliven that person so that they can then go out and do more of the things that they need to do. So when I talk about things that I'm just like, yes, I totally can do this. Um, and I feel energized, energized. That is the word I was looking for energized. Um, so Mars is also a shower of how we can become more energized. And that one-on-one relationship for the person with Mars in the seventh house really helps energize that person. Okay. Let's go on to the eighth house. I love the eighth house. Uh, the eighth house is all about inheritance. It's all about assets. It's kind of this place where we can also connect with our ancestors and um, do like a lot of uh, ancestral work can be done there. So if your Mars is in the eighth house, you might feel really drawn to doing a lot of ancestral work. Um, if it's in the eighth house, I just like, I'm just hearing like, um, insurance people like they're obsessed with like insurance and wills. They could have Mars in their eighth house, which is just like, let's do this and it's so exciting maybe in a, a like a calm exciting way um but it's so exciting and and they just feel this pull to do it right because mars can kind of create um it's like this drive right and it, it's different because venus pulls us in too but mars is just like Whoa. Like it kind of like pulls us in like that. Like we just want it. We want to do it. We can't get enough of it. Like, oh, I just love talking, right? So it's it's, it's similar. It's similar to that. So these are some of the things that you can see, you could see in the eighth house with Mars in the eighth house. All right, let's talk about Mars in the ninth house. Um, Mars in the ninth house. And the ninth house is all about um, higher education and learning, and it can be about religion as well. And so the Mars in the ninth house really just says a lot about, I need to learn. I want to learn. It drives this learning. It drives, it could drive religion. 
Um, if that's something that's important to you and, and your Mars is in the ninth house, just like doing all things religion and, and approaching things from this like really religious point of view, which could is, is different than spirituality. Um, my husband has Mars in his ninth house and I see that very much he's a salesman and he is like, I need to know my product inside and out and then I can sell it. So when he very first started with a company that he's with right now, he spent the first few months like really getting to know his product and, um, and then made a really big difference for him. Is that the way that everybody needs to work? No, not necessarily. But for him, that is absolutely key for him. And when he finds new information, he just like gathers all the information. He wants to gather all the information and, and it feeds him and he kind of like, you know, gets like hyper-focused on it. And, and it's so good for him because then it, it helps drive all of his actions after that, like hyper focused in like a really um, healthy balanced way, not like the hyper focus that I was talking about earlier. But it just gives him like, this is what I need to do in order to succeed. I need to gather all of this information and then I can feel more comfortable um, going out and doing these things. Okay. That was the ninth house. Let's talk about the 10th house. So the 10th house is career and, and business. And I really see this. Um, I see this Mars. I hear the Mars in the 10th house being like ideas and going and wanting to go and do, um, is, and, and it's so fun. Like the thing that I'm hearing right now is you know, we have our natal chart and then we have our solar return. And so we get to experience Mars in these different places throughout our life. Right now, my solar return for this year, Mars is in my ninth house. And I will tell you, I am experiencing a drive to learn a lot of things. Um, and, and it was so fantastic as I looked at my solar return um, just a couple of days ago, actually, and I saw that I was like, oh, well, that makes a, real, a lot of sense. And then combined with my natal Mars in the third house is like, I want to talk about it. I want to talk about what I'm learning about and I want to keep learning and and know the things um, about this topic. And so it has that drive. So then we have um, Mars in the 10th house. So we have Mars in the 10th house that is really a driver for our career. It's a driver for our business. It feeds it. And then when we feed that business to our Mars, then our Mars is like, yes, I want more of that. And, and it like perpetuates the cycle. So this is where we can see um, also the opportunity again to take a step back and say, am I experiencing Mars in a balanced and, and healthy and helpful way? Am I experiencing Mars in a healthy and helpful way? Um, and so you can ask yourself that too. Uh, so Mars is all about, in the 10th house, is all about career and business and really giving us the oomph that we need. I want to say for just a moment that it is really important to honor where your Mars is at because this is what how you were designed. This is who you were designed to be and the mission that you have on this earth, in this world, um, your Mars will help you fulfill that mission. And so just love your Mars um, and love it, love like love it into balance, right? Okay, <sighs> let's talk about the 11th house. I am so excited to talk about the 11th house. All right, Mars in the 11th house. 11th house is like friendships, it's groups, it's alliances. And I want to say this is so fantastic because um, just this morning I was talking to somebody um, and their daughter has Mars in the 11th house. And as I was listening to their chart, I was like, oh, because it didn't feel like groups, right? Because um, she's very, she has a lot of stuff in her seventh house. So intimate relationships are really, really important to her. But the sev the 11th house, that's where her Mars was. And I was like, hmm, it doesn't feel like groups. But what it felt like was alliances. And what I heard was alliances are everything to me. And as I was talking to her mom, her mom said, oh, yes. She's very much like, uh, you said you were going to do this. 
uh, wh like, why isn't it being followed through? Or he said he was going to play with me and now he's not. That's an issue. And that's an issue because alliances are very important to her and they feed her and they help create this like a uh, place of security for her. And so it's very important um, as her mom for her to be able to see uh, why alliance, like why she has this sort of communication and why this is important and why it drives her. Uh, it could also be very, I'm sure, not even could be, but will be very helpful for her in her career and in, in her, her relationships and in, in whatever it is that she um, does in the future, right? I'm not going to do predict astrology but whatever she does in the future that mars in the 11th house really being tied to alliance will be very helpful for her okay and the last house the 12th house so the 12th house is um I love the 12th house so much. It's really all about the unseen. It's about the subconscious. It's about the spirituality. So like the personal relationship that we have with God. Uh, so if your Mars is in the 12th house, you could really have this drive for the unseen thing. Maybe you have a drive to, to do meditations every day, or you have a drive to teach meditations and to walk people through like one of the things that just coming to my mind right now is like yoga um and doing this um these yoga meditations whether that's kundalini yoga or another form of yoga um and you're moving your body and, and you're just like really connecting yourself to that pace place of subconscious or hypnotherapy like that's another drive of um excuse me, connecting to the unconscious. You could have your um, motor in the 12th house and just really have this drive to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship. Like I'm, I'm like getting down. Can you see me getting down? Like this one-on-one -on -one relationship with God and just being like, this is what's going to happen. And this is what's going to feed me. And, and as I get that like as I'm fed, then I'm able to continue to go forward and move forward and do. And yes, 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 it helps so much. So seeing uh, where your Mars is at in your chart, again, comment below, tell me, where is your Mars in your chart? I would love to hear. And how are you seeing that show up in your life in that area? Okay, so I wanna take just a second and like sprinkle in a little bit of the sign, right? Like the signs. so. I'm going to use this as an example. Um, my my um, Mars is in the third house, and it's Virgo. It's in it's in Virgo, right? That's my sign, and it's very like very much. I really like that. So my communication. How do I like my communication? I like my communication detailed, <laughs> like not like all of the details. Like and then he took a breath, and then he moved his left foot. But I'm exact on conversation when i tell my kids to go tell another child something i want them to tell them exactly what i said word for word when i'm getting stories back i want to know exactly how it happened not like your perception which is tricky but i want to know really what were the details of the story right how did it happen exactly how it was said it was happened um and then you've got like i'm just thinking um You've got this Mars. If you had Aries in your 10,000, thousand, you had Mars in there. Is this drive, and it's a like a a, a blowtorch drive to move into business, and it's just like I'm paving the way, and it's just like like that, but with the zzz behind it. Um, so it's like this a lot of really powerful energy in the 10th house versus if you had like cancer in the 10th house and you had that mars driving the cancer it would be like gotta nurture gotta nurture gotta nurture my business like what is it that my business needs in order to feel nurtured maybe it's nurturing your clients maybe it's nurturing your email list maybe it's um taking the time to like do power hours like ceo power hours or whatever that thing is to nurture maybe your business is all about nurturing like right so it could be that um mars just really helps us um, see where our motor is being driven and then um, honor the motor and be able to like really understand um, 
where we might need to put the motor back in balance so that we can um, express Mars in a way that brings us and the people around us so much joy. So I can't wait to hear where your Mars is at, how you're seeing it show up in your life. Comment below, like, and subscribe for more Sounds of Astrology videos. And um, I would love to see you and hear you in my Facebook group, Sing Your Soul with Seidel Schultz. Okay, till next time. Bye.